Okay, so what you're about to see is a short depiction of a real problem in the world. Uh, all we ask is that you give us a couple minutes of your attention, and it can make you a lot smarter about what's actually going on in the world. All rise for the magnificent dear leader, Nick, Nick Tiffany. Oh, okay. Rise. <laughs> Now bow, bow down to the omnipotent leader, Nick Tiffany. Bow, kowtow to his wonderful visit. Oh, sire, sire, I would like to share a story extolling the extraordinary deeds of our benevolent dear leader. This weekend, the headmaster of Stevenson did not bow to the great holy leader, Nick Tiffany. <gasps> Pause for audience to gasp. <laughs> but we all know what happens to those who oppose the dear leader. In a fit of un insurmountable rage, our Nick Tiffany, with all the might and just his pinky finger, crushed the entire villainous school, stopping those pirate devils in their tracks. Bar with my face on it. It's a selfie. <laughs> Wait, Nick. Wait, Nick. You didn't clap for the last story. Do you have a problem with Nick Tiffany, our all-knowing leader? Yeah. Are you weenie? <laughs> <laughs> Why is Nick Tiffany ruling? Why can't we have somebody else, like Ben Scott, be ruling? <laughs> ben Scott is tall. <laughs> Extremely handsome and is much stronger than Nick Tiffany. Plus, I'm sure he'd let us have free elections. The Nick Titty Candy Bar, thank you. Uh, uh, so, okay, so indoctrination is, that's what the presentation was about, is defined as teaching someone to accept a doctrine of values uncritically. Um, this can lead to, uh, well, the scene you just saw was a representation of a society based off of uh, indoctrination and the oppression of intellectual individuality. Um, we're studying indoctrination in Asian history, but really this is a global issue that's affected the world for centuries, uh, if not millennia, up to the modern day. Why is it a problem? Well, political indoctrination is just one form of indoctrination. There are many others, just signing one is religion. You can also indoctrinate someone into religion. Uh, furthermore, brainwashing and peer pressure, like you just saw that we did on Nick, uh, Nick Newman, uh, are just some ways that you can make someone indoctrinated. Um, there are also more extreme ways, such as torture, uh, imprisonment, and just uh, actually teaching children to accept these beliefs and just that sort of pressure. Um, so why would someone indoctrinate another person? Simply put, uh, because they want others to follow them without questioning their actions. In essence, they want a hive mind under their control and will do anything to get it. Um, what are some examples of indoctrination? I actually know someone who was in Mao Zedong's Red Guard um, and was as a teenager taught to adore his dear leader unconditionally. Uh, he, uh, he's back in America, he's in America now and he's uh, fit in quite well and he understands and actually kind of resents what happened to him as a kid. Um, Just to say how extreme it was, Red Guards actually went around like killing teachers yeah, and uh, such. And they were, they were the students killing the teachers destroying all evidence of the past. Yeah. So this was just indoctrination to the extreme. Um, now, indoctrination also affects us here in the United States. Um, I'm not sure if you heard the news story a couple weeks ago, but there was actually a Buddhist uh, student who was forced to pray, at a, uh, not in a Buddhist way, at a uh, school in Louisiana. Public school. Public school. 
Um, another thing is, um, with almost every single president dating back to Reagan, there have been kids who have been taught to adore the current president in just songs of just slavish praise that really doesn't have any meaning, just flattery. Um, indoctrination is not a simple problem either to resolve, because you just can't please, simply say, oh, what you were taught was wrong, because it's almost impossible to change someone's mind. Um, preventing their uh, indoctrination, therefore, is the best way to go about it, um, but that's also very difficult to go about. Um, and preventing indoctrination is really as easy as being critical and aware of what information you're absorbing. So we had two goals for our presentation today. One was to make you aware of an issue that's plagued civilization for centuries, and the other was to show you that while it's unlikely we'll ever, ever solve the problem of indoctrination, you can prevent it from affecting you on a personal level simply by being a little bit more careful um, and analytical of the knowledge you gain each day. Um, uh, thank you for giving us this time and your attention. Have a great uh, have day. Have a great day, and hail Nick Tiffany. <laughs>
If you are part of a music ensemble, uh, like a chamber group that has members from other schools, they are welcome to join you on our stage for this performance. It's Friday night, the 28th. This is the Friday after we come back from spring break. Uh, I have this form here, which you can pick up as you leave. Fill it out and get it back to me. It says, by Monday, the 25th of March. I meant Monday, the 24th of March. I don't have enough fingers to count that high, so I made a mistake. Uh, we do would like, we'd like you to sing or, or play. We'll have an accompanist available for you if you need an accompanist for your, for your piece. Um, pick up one of these from me as, as you leave, if you're interested, and then talk to me, ask questions. Thank you. Executive Student Council nominations are going to open when we come back from spring break. If you are interested, you need to talk to me before you start even thinking about running. Um, you to be to run for president, you have to be currently in grade 11. To run for vice president, you have to be currently in grade 10 or 11. Um, for the other positions, you can currently be in grade 9, 10, or 11. You need an information sheet from me. So please, if you're interested, um, come and talk to me. So the eighth grade is cleaning out the lost and found tomorrow. So pick up all your junk and take it home so that we don't have as much work to do as we want. All right, thank you. most stressful times on any given day. My family has tried many things to help me wake up in the morning, from turning on the lights to spraying water in my face. On multiple occasions, I have been dragged out of my room to find myself waking up in a different room than which I fell asleep in. Crap. Oh, sorry, that was really bad. Oh, I have also been really disturbed from my peaceful sleep when somebody shoved a bag of ice cubes into my shirt. <laughs> I, I feel that I need at least 15 hours of sleep to fully function throughout a day. <laughs> Most of the time, I'll get around half that amount, maybe less. Usually, since I don't get enough sleep, Usually, since I don't get enough rest, I will stay half asleep for the entire day. It is very difficult to concentrate while trying to look like I'm paying attention in class. <laughs> I think my teachers know this, so I force myself to try harder. Usually, no, most of the time, I can wake up early enough to take a shower, eat, and drink. But it is very difficult. I like how you're reading it. Oh, well, um. <laughs> I know that these methods are not a substitute for getting enough sleep. <laughs> oh, sorry. Ultimately, I. Th yeah. Oh, I think I got that right. Ultimately, I think I need to get enough sleep. I wish I could be one of those people who could have an easy time getting up in the morning. But for now, uh, <laughs> the last line of my speech and I forget it. Um, <laughs> is that good enough? <laughs> my speech, yes. <laughs> For now, I just need to I just need to do the best I can and not give up yeah. <laughs>
trailing after me. It was like the best thing ever for me at that age. I remember all the ways that this paper would move through the air, making all sorts of figurations, as I would watch wrapped in this divine and toiletry items in beauty. <laughs> now, all over dramatizing aside, perhaps that's what inspired me to pursue art as a hobby and hopefully as a potential career. I guess you can't really know for sure as you don't necessarily remember every day of your life. But what I do remember is my development. I remember going from toilet paper to making toys out of construction paper to kindergarten scribbles to doodles and finally and currently to developed illustration, digital imagery, and creative and fictional writing. How the writing got in there I'm not really sure but I just did. <laughs> and, and so during elementary school I was known as the class artist. The kid that people would come to to have stuff drawn for them, or to simply admire my masterpieces. <laughs> and so, I'm not going to lie, at that young age I felt pretty special about it. And so, because <laughs> not only was I being able to pursue my own um, interests, but I was also pleasing other people. Now, as I got older, I came to realize that people didn't exactly have the time to care about what Oliver drew because they were growing up and having responsibilities like more difficult homework, school, a life. <laughs> and so and so at that point I came to realize that after all these years of pleasing people that I had kind of drifted away from my own originality, that I had kind of separated from from being what I wanted to be as an artist. And so I took so I realized ah, so after realizing this so after realizing this I made the decision to not really that that's not that having the approval of everyone else didn't necessarily matter to me as much as enjoying what I did did. And so I still hold that predetermined fate to, to myself to this day, and as I reflect all back upon it from now and into the future, I'll remember that it all began with a single strand of toilet paper. Okay, the York School Talent Show is on, so it's going to happen after spring break on... April 17th in the theater. So if you guys are planning on doing any sort of act, whether you have a lot of talent or you just want to have fun, um, there will be sign ups on the club board and online. Paul and I are playing in the All Star game, which is a big game that's happening in Alisal this Sunday, and it's a big conglomeration of a bunch of really good players from a bunch of really good schools. It's it's all the seniors. Um, I kick off at three, he kicks off five. You should come and watch. Yeah. Go to the club today at lunch in Sensei's room. Reminder: Game of Drugs going to be left inside the library in case you want to play. Um, it's, a, it's a school project, so please try and like keep it intact. Don't lose any of, any of the pieces. Um, also, tomorrow is the last day before break, so please, everyone, do your work jobs. Um, yesterday, Girls Across had a game against Catalina, and we won the second half. But Jerry had two goals, Claire had one, Betsy had one assist, and Kate one player of the game. Tennis match today at two, meet up in the rain.